Our theme this year is ingenuity stems from the black community. And we want to just say thank you to the many African American men and women that work in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And to the schools that have embraced the STEM programs. And programs like the robotic competitions that give the students hands-on engineering experience. Mathematicians like Katherine Johnson, who helped put a man in space with her calculations and without the use of a computer, because she was considered a computer. And engineer Lonnie Johnson, who made a lot of kids and some adults, including me, very happy with a toy called Super Soaker. You remember the big Super Soakers? I liked it, my brothers didn't like it too much. We're at this time, I want to introduce to you uh, Mistress of Ceremonies, Miss Jasmine Stiles. <laughs> Jasmine Stiles comes to us from ABC Action News. She's originally from Orlando. She, was, um, prior to coming to Tampa, was in Texas, and she was part of the crew that wall-to-wall -wall interviewed the Hurricane Harvey, and then she came to Tampa. She hosted morning, weekend anchor news reporter. She graduated from Florida State University. She's a member of the National Black Journalism Association, and she's a Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated. So I want to present to you our Mrs. of Ceremony, Ms. Jasmine Stiles. Good morning, everybody. And also, ooh, to my sorrow right there. Sorry, my voice is kind of shot. I'm not used to waking up this late in the day. It's, it's been a nice go round. Uh, if you have not seen my face, it's probably because you're not an early riser, and that is more than okay. As someone who goes to bed at 8 p.m. and wakes up at 1.50 a.m., I would so much more rather be in your position. But again, my name is Jasmine Stiles. Yes. That is my real last name. Um, I work for ABC Action News. I'm Morning Report and I'm a weekend anchor and I'm just so honored to be a part of such a big program for the city of Tampa. Uh, I just got here a year ago so I'm still learning what is big here and apparently this is a very big deal. When I talked to some of my mentors they said, oh you got picked? I said, look, I, I'm just happy to be here. Thank you so much Celeste for uh, believing that I could lead your program. Uh, this is the 31st annual City of Tampa Black History Celebration. Can we just have a round of applause for something that's been going for so long and that's so well put together uh, by the committee here. And of course, we are so excited to have you guys here this morning. You could have been anywhere on this uh, Tuesday, but you're here with us. Um, we talked a little bit about the present, but let's uh, go back to the past because we can't understand how we got here without acknowledging the people who brought us here. So retired Director of Community Affairs, Mr. Bobby L. Bowden, not the Florida State coach, I too was confused for a minute, wanted the city of Tampa to have the first culturally diverse celebration for their employees in 1988. And Mayor Sandra Friedman agreed, and the city of Tampa Black History Committee presented the first program in the city council chambers to an audience of 50 employees. So you can see we've grown tremendously and today we continue with Mr. Bowden's vision to celebrate our African-American history our culture and our heritage and I, I know he was he's in the front if you could just wave so people know who you are Mr. Bowden thank you so much for your vision and your foresight and at this time, I would like to ask everyone to please stand as Pastor Douglas Walker from Tyre Temple United Methodist Church comes to the podium to deliver the invocation. And then immediately following that, we'd like you to remain standing as Jordan Trice, a member of the Mayor's Youth Corps Class of 2019, leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Then the singing of the National Anthem will follow by city employee, Mr. Cedric Freeman. Let us pray. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, we thank you, God, that you have brought us so far. We thank you for this opportunity, this 31st time to get together 
and not just to do a rehash of history, but to look forward to the future as we honor and recognize young people and the work that they are doing now. We thank you, God, that you have given us this privilege and this opportunity to be in this place. And we thank you that you are present with us as we demonstrate how important and how valuable it is for us all to work together for the good of us all. We thank you, God, for what you have done. We thank you for how far you have brought us. And we thank you that you can and will take us further along the way till we all reach that place of unity, of strength, of hope that works for all of us. And we ask it now and give you thanks in the many names in which you were called. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air give proof through the night that our flag was still there who oh, see does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Thank you so much to Pastor Walker, Jordan, and one more time for Cedric Freeman. You made that look easy, friend. And just if, if you weren't sure, the uh, national anthem is one of the hardest songs to sing technically. It sounds easy. We make fun of people like Fergie when they mess it up. But it is really difficult to sing. So shout out to Cedric. And he's not just a singer. He's also an application systems analyst in the technology and innovations department, meaning he knows math really well. Yeah, STEM, all that jazz. Um, so again, thank you so much for blessing us with that lovely rendition of the national anthem. All right, we would also like for all of our elected officials in attendance, if you could just stand and be recognized just so we can see you, give you some claps, give you a little round of applause there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> And we also want to acknowledge the students and our future leaders that are in attendance today. So if I call out your school or organization, um, just let us know where you are. Give us a little uh, church finger real quick. All right, we got Legacy Preparatory Academy. Hey, church finger. Y'all follow directions well, yeah? Men of Vision. Looking real spiffy in your kente, brother. Real spiffy. And then we have Bible Truth Ministries. And I think that's everybody. Thank you guys so much for coming. Um, are you guys in school right now, technically? Not a little skippy skip. Thanks for coming. But it's all like worth it because you get to get out of class. The teachers are cool with it because black kids. 
like how we did that there. Like how we did that. All right. We also want to uh, send a special thank you to the mayor's Hispanic Heritage Committee and the mayor's African American Advisory Council for their continued support. Because without them, we couldn't have programs like this that mean so much to us. And of course, after a long history of service to the city of Tampa, Bob Buckhorn was elected as the 58th mayor of the city. And we all know that this is his last go round. We are very sad to see you go. You are, like I said, I've only been here for a year, but you are the talk of the town and everybody loves you so, so, so much, whether you know it or not. So a little uh, backstory on him. He was officially sworn into office on April 1st, 2011, and he's kept his focus on the economic leadership, stability, and business opportunities in the Tampa Bay area. And under Mayor Buckhorn, Tampa has become one of the nation's largest cities and the third largest city in Florida. So we applaud Mayor Bob Buckhorn and his administration for their continued support of the city of Tampa's Black History Committee and the continued efforts of the employees who work so tirelessly to make sure that the city of Tampa employees and the community community has a black history celebration and various other community events that are presented year round. So we want to welcome Mayor Bob Buckhorn as he brings his greetings for the last time for this program. Jasmine, thank you. Um, you're a bad influence on these kids. <laughs> None of this skippy, skippy stuff, kids. I, you know. um, and in the interest of uh, protecting my political backside, let me, uh, this is a Delta, uh, let me welcome the AKAs in the house. <laughs> I know y'all think I'm sweet on the Deltas, but I'm, just because I'm wearing red, that doesn't mean anything. I do have a pink and green tie, so we're, we're good with that. Um, to all of you, 31 years, I think I was there at the beginning. Um, this would not have happened without Bobby Bowden and Bobby Bowden's leadership for all of those years at, at City Hall, making sure that the, the African American experience in our city is not only celebrated, but it is studied, that it is honored, that it is, uh, that it enjoys a place of historical significance in everything that we do. Um, that is reflected in Perry Harvey Park, uh, that we constructed to celebrate the history of Central Avenue and the history of the African American experience in this community. Some of which, candidly, was painful. Some of which chapters we would prefer not to read, but we must. Because without knowing where we came from, we will never know what that path forward is. So it's important that as a city we continue to celebrate this and do so with vigor, recognizing that we are passing that torch to a new generation that sits right there. And it is so very important that you know who is it upon shoulders you stand, that you know the stories and the chapters and the histories and the verses of this experience that we call the African American experience, but it is our experience. It is our story. This city is a beacon of light in some troubling times. We look at the coarseness of the rhetoric in Washington, D.C. We think about the venom and the hatred and the intolerance, the language. That's not us. That is not Tampa. We celebrate our diversity as a strength, never as a weakness. We honor the inherent contributions of everybody, irrespective of where you came from or how you got here. We build bridges not walls. This is our city. <clears throat> and in all of its shades and ethnicities and genders and orientations, irrespective of the God you worship or who you love, we are Tampanians, first and foremost. We honor each other. We celebrate each other. We value each other. We respect each other. We celebrate with each other. We grieve with each other. We are Tampa proud and we are Tampa strong and do not ever let anybody divide us.
So in honor of that, but in honor of all that makes this place so special, let me declare, by virtue of the authority vested in me as the mayor of the city of Tampa, proclaim the month of February 2019 as Black History Month in the city of Tampa, and urge all of our citizens to join me in participating in the various events and celebrations that honor this annual tradition. Thank you, Bobby Bowden. Thank you. Let's keep it up. We're Tampa strong. The mayor is, will, will be very sadly missed. I, being a member of the Black History Committee for almost 24, 25 years, and being with the city of Tampa for 33, I've been here since he's been here. He's always been a very good friend of mine. I could hear him at any point hollering, CC, CC. So I knew that was my mayor calling me. He wasn't my mayor then. So I went from Bob to mayor. It's going to be kind of hard to go back to Bob. It will be. <laughs> you know, but this is just a little token of appreciation that the Black History Committee wanted to give you, and it's presented to Mayor Bob Borkhorn in appreciation of your leadership and loyal support to the city of Tampa's Black History Committee Incorporated. Thanks, we'll miss you. Oh, thank you. Before we keep it moving, one, isn't it so nice to have a mayor who just gets it? Yeah. yeah? He didn't even have like a speech planned out. That just all came from the top of the dome. You're really good at this. You're like the Barack Obama of Tampa rhetoric. <laughs> Good speech maker. Um, and also, since Mayor started it off, I guess we'll get it over with. We got to do a Greek roll call. All right. Okay. So we'll start off not in by favorites, because if we did, you know where it starts. So we'll start by year. So are the men of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated present? 06. Shout out to the good bros. And are the very pretty ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated in the building this morning. And I think we go, are the pretty boys of Kappa Alpha Psi in the building this morning. Yo, yo. Hey, colors. And then we've got one of my favorites, because my father is one, the men of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, my dogs, the good bros. And then, of course, we have my sorors, the devastating divas of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Shout out to my sorors. And then I'm trying to go, all right, we got 1914, so we've got the men of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Blue mob. All right, boys in blue. And then if I'm thinking right, wouldn't that be the ladies of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated? Hey, pretty kitties. Then, all right, so that means, is that our, where are we at? Are we at, we did Sigma, so we Sigma Gamma Rho, right? Okay, sorry, I'm losing count in my head. All right, we got the pretty poodles of Sigma Gamma Rho, Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> Little poodle on them. Um, and then, last but not least, I round out the Divine Nine. We should have the men of Iota Phi Theta Fraternity Incorporated. Maybe not. They're newer on the block. Still got love for you, though. All right, and so of course we want to thank Mayor Bob Buckhorn for your continuous support of Tampa's rich African-American culture and history. He did mention Perry Harvey Senior Park. I just went for the first time. If you've never gone, it is one of the prettiest parks I've ever been to, and I've been to a lot of places, so Tampa's got it going on. Um, so can we give our mayor just another round of applause, make him feel loved and appreciated? <laughs> 
And in partnership with the mayor, the Tampa City Council is the legislative branch of city government and is responsible for enacting ordinances and resolutions that the mayor of Tampa administers as chief executive officer. Chairman of City Council, Councilman Frank Reddick, represents District 5, and so we're going to welcome him to the podium as he brings greetings on behalf of Tampa City Council. In 2011, I came on board with the mayor. 2018, 2019, I'll be leaving with the mayor. <laughs> but I tell you, I'm not going to regret it because I get to follow the mayor on a lot of these occasions. And the things that I would like to say, he says before I get a chance to say it before I get up here. So if he limited me to how he limited us on city council. <laughs> and, but I just want to say that I've been an enjoyable eight years, um, enjoyable eight years working with the mayor. Um, we did get some things accomplished. And to my city council members that are present, uh, I know you recognize as the elected official, but I'm going to ask you to stand with the presentation of the accommodation. We, city council member, y'all don't hesitate to stand at a council meeting. I don't know what to think. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of the Tampa City Council, we would like to present this accommodation to the City of Tampa Black History Committee for 31 years of having such a joyful and wonderful black history celebration in the City of Tampa. We congratulate you, and we wish the committee and the City of Tampa uh, great success for the future. All right, now we've come to the part of the program where we get a little bit of entertainment on. So we have coming to the stage self-taught musician and singer, Mr. Tom Baptist, also known as Tampa Bay's smoothest vocalist. Tom is originally from Boston, but has made the Bay his home, and he's performed in the Bay Area since 1995. Tom has recorded four CDs of original music and can be seen every Saturday night at the Hangar Restaurant and Flight Room Lounge in St. Pete. So get up out your seats, give a round of applause applause for Mr. Tom Baptist. Good morning. Am I going? I'm so honored to be here. And I appreciate the invitation, and that's one of my originals. I wrote this song with the idea of uplifting and feeling better about yourself, and how we do this. So full of wonder I 
bright and hopeful future. within you let the voice within you raise each you a higher Vessel full of wonder One more time for Mr. Tom Baptist, Tampa Bay's smoothest vocalist. 
I'm still teetering on the keys to play What a Wonderful World, and he's playing two keyboards at the same time. Wow, what a way to make me feel about myself. All right, so it's now time in our program for our keynote speaker, and the person who's going to introduce him is has worked with him before in the contract administration department. We're talking about Ms. Jillian Howard. She's the project coordinator for the city of Tampa, so please help me welcome Jillian to the podium. Thank you, Jasmine. Good morning. Good morning. For many people, the opportunity to become the first in anything is never presented or realized. This is not true for this morning's keynote speaker. In 1997, James Jackson Jr. became the first African American to hold the position of city architect. Like most individuals in the black community that proclaim the status of first, he upholds the notion that a person of African heritage can succeed in any capacity. During his 21 years of service with the city of Tampa, his embodiment of what effective collaboration and ingenuity can achieve is seen in the multitude of projects he directly and indirectly designed. For example, the NFL Yet, Seminole Heights Garden Center, several fire stations, and the re-imaging of Julian B. Lane Park, to name a few. His involvement in STEM continues in his current employment as the design and construction director for Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital in St. Petersburg, Florida. James is not just about application, he's also about education. For several years, he was a professor at Hillsborough Community College where he taught, hear this, all courses available in the building design technology department except AutoCAD 3 and survey. <laughs> and while he is no longer formally in the classroom, he continues to extend his knowledge to any and everyone willing to receive it. In addition to his litany of professional achievements, James is also a member of four professional organizations, one of which is the American Institute of Architects. He is also an active member of the Bay Area community through his involvement with and serving as the current president of the Ada Row chapter of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. There are so many wonderful things I could say about this morning's speaker, but in the interest of time, I'll simply say that it is my pleasure and honor to introduce my friend and mentor, James Jackson, Jr. And they really wanted me to do this. So, I'm glad to be back in Tampa with the family here. And I knew that when Cece called me, I said, wow, the mayor really missed me. <laughs> and he said, Cece, make James the keynote speaker. I'm like, oh. So I hope I don't break the key or the note. <laughs> the 2018 updated US Census reveals 328 million people live in the U.S. 22 million are in Florida. 3 million are in the Tampa Bay area. There are 2,266 licensed African-American architects in the United States, of which 115 are in Florida, of which nine are in the Tampa Bay area, and there's one from St. Petersburg. <laughs> That's how I would start the Great American Teach-In to describe to students how small the numbers are in architecture and how wide open of a field it is to excel in. Welcome to my part of the Black History Program. This discussion is sponsored by, of course, the Black History Committee. Thank you, CC. Honorary Mayor Bob Buckhorn, Omega Psi Phi Fraternity, and all my favorite barbecue joints around the Bay Area. Because <laughs> you know how we like barbecue, me and Brother Reddick. I see Brother Murray in the back. So, one of my favorite poems, Invictus, by William Ernst Henley, Inley, ends like this I am the captain of my faith, I am the master of my soul. 
The STEM theme this year is a perfect topic to integrate the black, with Black History Month, which is my favorite year-long holiday. It's a holiday that renews the purpose of our story in 2019, 156 years after the Emancipation Proclamation and 104 years ago from when the topic of acknowledging black achievement was first documented in quarterly publications. Now, a reminder of why black history is celebrated. For those of us who are 80s child, you remember the mantra, uh, black history 365? Y'all remember that, right? Many probably don't know that Carter G. Woodson was a member of the Omega Psi Phi fraternity. It was at one of Omega's national meetings in 1920 that Woodson approached the fraternity to start a program to help spread the word across the nation on recognizing and documenting Negro history and literature achievements. Omega Psi Phi agreed to be the platform to get the message across the country. At that time, in the early part of the 20th century, it was very evident of the achievements that black people performed, created, and developed, most often from some of the worst hazardous jobs known, like traffic control, or dropping a pin to lock train cars together, to bailing cotton. During the early 1920s, Wilson believed he could capitalize on the intellectual and artistic furor that surrounded the birth of the Harlem Renaissance. In 1925, with the fraternity's blessing, Woodson modified the name from Negro History and Literature Week to Negro History Week. He then switched the celebratory month from April to February to commemorate the birthdays of Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln. In 1926, Negro History Week developed the following aims. One, to inspire pride in the Negro race. Two, to acquaint the nation with the fact that the Negro has never ceased to achieve nobly and that he is achieving nobly today. And three, to have the Negro generally to believe that as his brother has achieved in his own day, so may he. Carter G. Woodson and Omega Psi Phi perpetuated the annual acknowledgement of black achievements for some 50 years before black educators at Kent State University started the first celebration in February of 1970. And in 1976, President Gerald Ford recognized Black History Month during the country's bicentennial, urging Americans to seize the opportunity to honor the too often neglected accomplishments of black Americans in every area of endeavor throughout the country's history. Ingenuity stem from the black community is the discussion topic. Science, a systematic enterprise that builds and organizes knowledge in the form of testable explanations and predictions about the universe. Technology, science and knowledge put into practical use to solve problems. Engineering, cleverness and engineer. Math, that which is learned. This topic, ingenuity, STEM from the black community main purpose, is a realization that STEM professionals have stood on the shoulders of many great pe people and shoulder to shoulder to many people we all know today. Currently at the city of Tampa, African Americans occupy at least 30 positions across seven departments. That's at least five in the TNI department, at least 10 in accounting, at least 13 engineers across three departments, one architect, and one lab technician at the water plant. Can anyone please give an applause to these trailblazers that I stand shoulder to shoulder with performing STEM functions for the benefit of the citizens of Tampa every day. There are others in the community that I stand with at various technology and engineering companies and firms in construction, medical, and architectural offices right here in the Bay Area, all participating in solving problems either in the sciences, the built environment, or in technology. Then, you have the shoulders we stand on from our documented history that include monumental names of progress. Here's a brief list of some people you know and some you may not. Benjamin Banneker, 
appointed by President George Washington to the D.C. Commission that helped map out what was described as the country's new national capital. Euphemia Lofton Haynes, the first African American to receive a PhD in mathematics. Otis Boykin, the artificial heart pacemaker control unit. Patricia Bath, the cataract laser phaco probe, which enables eye surgeries to correct vision. Alexander Miles, the modern day elevator. Ever heard of Marcana? whose 3D graphics technology and software was used in movies such as Jurassic Park, Aladdin, and The Hunt for the Red October. Or how about Gerald A. Lonson, the modern home video game console, young people, which was called the Fairchild Channel F, came out in 1976. I know y'all probably wasn't there. More advanced than Atari to my 80s people. It was the first game to use cartridges and was the springboard for Nintendo, Xbox, and PlayStation to evolve. And what about Henry T. Sampson, who invented, who invented the gamma electric cell? That was a solution that generates its own auxiliary power and is a key infrastructure that makes a cell phone what it is today. But, yeah, 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 you, you, you use it something. Yeah, I've done my research. <laughs> Paul Williams, first black architect to graduate from UCLA, my personal uh, written favorite architect, known as the architect to the stars. Many of his buildings in Los Angeles have been displayed for many years on every TV show, from One Adam 12 in 1968 to the Hilton's reality show, The Simple Life in 2003. Harvey Gantt, innovative architect and first black architect as mayor of a major city who continues to shape the culture and essence of the city where he led government, which is Charlotte, North Carolina. And then, finally, me. <laughs> there it is. Yes. That's what Omegas do. That's what Omegas do. We, lo we lose control. So, the beginning of Invictus, my favorite poem, starts like this. Out of the night that covers me, black, as a pit from pole to pole. I think whatever God may be for my unconquerable soul. I sometimes refer to myself as the black Forrest Gump. Yeah, I said it, Dennis. <laughs> and some of you can claim this title too. When I think of STEM and before the notion of STEM as an 80s child growing up, I realize that so much has changed in my, my, my lifetime already. Here's a short roll call of evolutionary things and moments that I recall and will be familiar to you. Eight tracks to the cassette tape, to the CD, to the MP3, right? Paper and pencil to the computer. Piano to the electric keyboard. From disco to rap music. The 808 beat machine instead of traditional drums. Carburetors to fuel injectors. Roll up windows to power windows. Muhammad Ali, the goat, to Tom Brady, the other goat. <laughs> I'm in Tampa when the Bucks go 0 26 in 76, then go to the playoffs in 79. I'm in DC when Doug Williams won the Super Bowl in 1988. I'm in Tampa when the discussion the WNB started in government business sector in 1993. I'm in Tampa when Jeanette Martin was selected as the first black city clerk in 1993. I'm in Tampa when Gwen Miller is elected first black woman at city council in 1995. I'm in Tampa when we finally won the Super Bowl in 2003 with Tony Dungy's team. I mean, say that. <laughs> see, right time, right place, just like Forrest Gump. So in retrospect, I realized my STEM career started when I was born. Both of my parents were biology majors. My dad went on to earn a law degree. My mother taught biology for 34 years. I was by default in a scientific think tank, coming from, I guess, scientific DNA. This union produced five college graduates. My interest in architecture started when I was in seventh grade. The wheel class schedule, most of us would know, about every nine weeks we rotated from sewing to cooking, eventually to the wood shop. 
It was in which I, I was exposed to architectural books that piqued my interest into the field of architecture. In high school, I matriculated through every class they had regarding drafting. I took all the key math, English, and science classes, including the advanced ones like geometry, trigonometry, physics, chemistry. When I was in 11th grade, I applied to a summer engineering program at Southern University to affirm if I would like engineering over architecture. I had fun that summer. We traveled to a nuclear plant and various chemical plants on top of daily classes. I knew after this experience that I wanted to focus on architecture. In college, I, I then realized the first overlap, art, has to what is known as STEM today. It was this textbook I had in a critical thinking class during my senior year. It was called The Poetics of Order. It was a book on classical architecture which discussed how proportion and spacing of buildings, parts, and structural systems were related to the rhythmic notions of and phraseology of music, while art embellished the architectural environment and explained the purpose through perspective drawings. I came to realize in my life that art has a role in STEM. One day I hope it's added. So beyond the requirements of life, school, church, keeping your room clean and chores, my parents pushed us into music learning. Piano was first, and we had those lessons at home. My dad, a former trumpet player, was keen on the boys playing brass. So in sixth grade, I picked up the French horn because I liked the way it looked. I played French horn from middle school through my second year in college, and then again my senior year in college. I had to stop. Uh, young people full time from playing my horn so I could become the architect I wanted to be. You see, band in college was a serious thing. I lived that life seen in the movie Drumline. Although some may think that was just cinema, depending on what black college you went to, that movie depicts accurately a lot of things that happen in black bands and give you a good idea of the work, the discipline, the memorizing, the effort it takes to be in music at a collegiate level which was a great training platform for one's self-being. So after graduating from college, I spent several years in the private sector as a budding young architect. At 29 years and nine months of age, Mayor Buckhorn, I was selected as a city architect. All journeys require chance meetings. And I give Dave Vaughn, who was a city architect before me, full credit and recognition for having belief in me and the vision that I can do the job. I then participated in a wonderful journey, leading, directing, or assisting in many projects, improving the quality of life for the citizens of Tampa, working with the Greco, Ario, and Buckhorn administrations. So when I do Great American Teaching today, I challenge the kids to at least think of STEM by stating curious questions to them, such as, wonder why the water runs, or where it comes from, or when you turn on the light, it works, or with street signs, you know your way. What would be an equally as important structure in comparison to your neighborhood community center, school, or fire station? And I would then tell them about treatment plants, wastewater pump stations, vital maintenance yards, and how the city is an organism. And they exist through STEM-driven work activities, critical work performed to maintain an organism called a city. Young people. The STEM fields are wide open. Don't be afraid to try it. Don't let people tease you about being smart or being what they think is different. In 2018, African Americans make up 7% of the nationwide STEM workforce of 17.3 million, so that's about 1.2 million of us. A recent Super Bowl commercial telegraphed the future of STEM with artificial inter intelligence characters. General Motors recently announced all their vehicles will be electric by the year 2023. Some folk, both young and not so young, think it's not cool being a smart person, or as some refer to as a nerd. Do they still use that term today? Well, if so, then I'm a nerd and proud of it. You see what one looks like. So, so here's some of my favorite nerds that have rock, TV, music, and sports. In case I didn't know, Montel Williams. He has a degree in engineering from the Naval Academy. Dominican Sue, 
All-American football player for the Rams, has a degree in construction management. Lonnie Love, degree in electrical engineering from Prairie View. Carlton Douglas, he's also known as Chuck D from the 80s rap group Public Enemy. Y'all know what I'm talking about? He has a degree in graphic design. You ever heard of my cousin O'Shea Jackson? <laughs> okay, yeah, Ice Cube. Ice Cube actually has an associate's degree in architectural drafting. What about Marvin Young? He's also known as Young MC, the song y'all all like, Bust a Move. He has a degree in economics. You know, then a, one of my honorary Black History Month members, William Stephen Belichick. Bill Belichick from the Patriots. Degree in economics. Other shout outs to rappers with degrees, Childish Gambino, Talib Kweli, Most Def, Guru, J. Cole, Sage Francis, Ludacris, David Banner, all are not related to STEM. I just wanted to give a shout out to some in the music business to have college degrees, because the idea is encouraging education people, so. So this is my best uh, Bob Buckhorn impersonation. My fellow Americans, <laughs> the state of our black community in STEM is strong. <laughs> I'm here to recruit the young and not so young minds in this room to continue the STEM mission. So if you like math, science, engineering, trying to figure things out or want to invent something, align yourself with the STEM fields. STEM fields are wide open, young, young people. Millennials, you are called. I call you the at your fingertip generation, because y'all are always doing that. You have access right now to many articles on STEM, websites that are portals to the recruitment of talent to college, websites that are available that gives information to attracting minorities to the field. Think about it. Here's one tip for an upcoming career, nuclear engineering. This may become the next number one field for the growth of STEM. Or you could be like me. Be an architect. Be creative in solving problems in the built environment while making silent monuments for yourself. And help me advance STEM with a silent A. Join the STEM Brigade and you can make STEM you. I do it every day and reinvigorate myself every morning by singing a little song in the shower. Yes, I'm gonna sing, where's Cedric? Oh, there's Cedric, where's Tom? Those are not the only people that can sing. Do y'all want me to hear me sing my song, my shower song? Yes. No? No, you want me to sing? I got one, it's right, I'm at the end. I'm at the, I need some music first, hold on. Shower. <laughs> the song goes like this, it's real simple. S is for the sexiness, I give it. T is for my tantalizing smile. E is for my middle name, Edward. A is for the achievement I will make, although it's a silent acronym character, but we're going to work on that. M is for the money that I can not earn, or it's being a part of the movement that's underway. That's it. That's, a, that's as far I got. So. I just wanted to prove to a couple of people that I, I can sing a little bit. I close wishing much hope that STEM continues to grow for my community, having the young people in this room join the black history movement in the many fields represented. As Carter G. Woodson reminds us, those who have no record of what their forebears have accomplished lose the inspiration what comes from the teaching of biography and history. Let's continue to write our story. Thank you. I thought you were going to hit me. Back and forth. Yes, you did. James just has, hasn't been gone very long, but he thought he kind of got away from us, but so when I called him, he, he very happily accepted, you know, but being the joker that he is, we knew he would be quite entertaining to everyone, while also giving an uplifting message to the young people that's here. 
This is an individual, he stood on the shoulders of those to get him to his point. Now the young people, his shoulders you will stand on so that you will advance on to be even better and greater things. James, this is just a token of our appreciation with your craziness that we just thank you. <laughs> We thank you, we love you, and we know you just crossed the bridge and you're always there when we need you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. One, what a heck of a recruitment uh, speech for Omega Sci Fi. Sheesh. Uh, you know, and I'm not, I'm not knocking it. I, I see y'all. Root to the good bros. Um, second, thank God black history is 365. Because if we were only stuck with February, right now, the lasting memory would be J-Lo doing a Motown tribute. And I don't want to go through the rest of my black history month with that on my mind. So, God, it's so nice that black history is just all the way around. Uh, was that not an uplifting speech? I will also say to the young people, he like if you can do math, stick with it. The people who are good at words and history don't make any money. Like <laughs> I'm a testament. So be smart, do great in math, so you're not counting on your fingers and embarrassing yourself in the grocery store like I do, um, and make massive amounts of money. That sounds like a good plan, right? See, I'm redeeming myself, because you can't skip class with math. You, you won't be able to do it well, I swear, on everything. We don't do C's in my household, so you gotta go to math class. I'm sure your parents don't let you do C's in your household either, right? No? Okay. We're See, redeeming myself, <laughs> right back on it. All right, so we now wanna welcome Bridget Gordon, um, who's the City of Tampa Black History Committee Vice President, who's gonna come and give some words of special thanks and acknowledgement to our sponsors and friends, and then we're gonna have another selection from Mr. Baptist. Good morning, have you enjoyed this so far? Yeah, good, all right, all right, at this time, we would like to recognize all of our continuous sponsors that have supported the City of Tampa Black History Committee. We would like you to please stand when we call your name. Herbert Kinsey, Rooms to Go, Tampa Electric Company, Amalgamated Transit Union Local Number 1464, Inc., McGriff, Seabells and Williams Incorporated, Bush Gardens, Aetna Incorporated, Care ATC, Tampa Bay Federal Credit Union, City of Tampa, Great Bethel, Willowbrader Technologies, Shirley Fox Knowles, United Healthcare Service Incorporated, Betty M. Fox, The Woods of Wanton Chapter Incorporated, MHS Class of 1971, Mary Newmeyer, Barbara Campbell, Swab Charitable Gerard and Ophelia Hopner, Marvin Martin, Bobby L. Bowden, the Tinsley Group Incorporated, Hart, and Don Johnson. Let's give them a round of applause. Also, we ask our many City of Tampa employees to stand to be recognized for their continuous contributions through payroll deductions. Please stand, give yourself a hand. Thank you so very much. You know, there are times in life that we all have ups and downs, and sometimes, as we've seen, some of our brothers and sisters get caught up in the downs, feel like they just can't go on. It's awfully sad. We all know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who just decided to check out just too soon. 
If you know somebody in trouble, help them out. That's the best thing we can do. Here's a song I wrote just to address that problem. Escape. Barely made it to the wall. Our simple plan to get away never got it done at all. So I looked to the sky, called out to the great unknown, and I said, Is it time to come home? Then I heard a voice saying, Moon June Macaroon. Why you wanna quit so soon? Life is just a one-way track. Sing, pal, listen now. You know your mama's gonna have a cow. And once you're gone, you can't go back. Stand up, stand up and shout. Tell them what you're all about. Nobody wants to hear you moan and groan. Stand up here, tell the world. That you've grown. So I started banging on the keys, eating rice and peas. Four day and night through dark and sun. Going like a child, knowing all the while. Yeah, baby, I'm really getting this job done. But time had come and gone, there was nothing going on. I felt so bad, sometimes I cried. Back then, all I really wanted to do was go find a nice little place, lay my head down quietly and hide. But I heard those voices singing, Moon June Macaroon, why you want to quit so soon? Life is just a one-way track. Sing, pal, listen now, you know your mama's gonna have a cow. And once you're gone, you can't go back. Stand up. Stand up and shout, tell them what you're all about. Nobody wants to hear you moan. Stand up here and tell the world that you're grown. started thinking, well, I can sing, I can write a song, and I can play. If I can make people smile, drink, eat, dance, get happy, I can get more pay. Now you hear the song I wrote. You hear me sing, you hear me play. So I can play the blues all night long. Smile the live long day. Yeah, then I can sing. Moon, June, macaroon. Why you wanna quit so soon? Life is just a one-way track. Sing, pal, listen now. You know your mama's gonna have a cow. And once you're gone, you can't go back. Stand up, stand up and shout. Tell them what you're all about. Nobody wants to hear you moan and groan. Stand up here and tell the world that you're grown. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Bridget and Tom. So this has truly been an exciting day of celebration. We want to give our sponsors, our program participants, and yourselves a nice round of applause one more time for y'all. 
So we're just about done with the program. We're going to have closing remarks by Celeste Gibbons Peoples, and then we will stand as our amazing singer slash mathematician does all, is all, be all. Cedric Freeman comes back on stage, and he's going to lead us in singing the first stanza that everybody should know of Lift Every Voice and Sing. If you don't, it's on page 10. Gotcha covered. And then afterwards, we will go over to Ballroom D, where there are refreshments, and we want to make sure that you visit the vendor booths as well. Well, thank you guys so much. Celeste? Thank you, thank you. Jasmine, as our new friend to the City of Tampa Black History Committee, we want to thank you for coming and being a fabulous Mrs. of Ceremonies and helping us celebrate our morning. And we'd like to present you with a small token of our appreciation. Ooh, before Valentine's Day! Yay! <laughs> And I know we'll be looking for you on a ABC Action News and when, right in our community. So thank you once again. Thank you to our keynote speaker, Mr. James Jackson. He thought he was done with the city. Well, not quite. And to our entertainment by Mr. Tom Baptist, the smoothest vocalist in the Tampa Bay area. Thank you for sharing your talents with us this morning. Remember, you can see him at the Hangar Restaurant and the Flight Lounge in St. Pete. To Council Chair Reddick, I didn't realize this was your last year, so we will definitely miss you. And to the rest of our program participants, I want to take this time out. Um, thank you for taking time out of your schedules to be with us this morning and for your continued support of our program. If I could please have all the Black History Committee members to please stand and just be recognized. We have worked hard, and this is outside of our normal duties. We've worked long and hard, you know, after hours. This is not our job. We have jobs that pay mortgage and all that good things, but this is something that we work hard for and that we love and we know what we stand for and we know what we do. So I just want to thank them for the hard work that they give and their support that they give for me. I want to also just say thank you for everyone for once again celebrating what makes our African American heritage, history, and culture so important. Many thanks to our sponsors, community partners, for always supporting this committee. Without you, we would not be able to give back to our community and to our children and our young adults, like through our scholarships and our celebrations. This year marks our 20th year of awarding scholarships to graduate in um, African American high school seniors in the Hillsborough County School District. To date, we've awarded over $200,000 to African American high school seniors in the school. Our next scholarship ceremony will be held in May, so please stop by the City of Tampa table in Ballroom D to get additional information on our scholarships that will be taking applications for a Just See Me. Also, our fourth annual golf tournament will be April 24th at Rogers Park Golf Course, and all proceeds of this goes towards our golf tournament, um, goes to our scholarship program, and there's also information in Ballroom D. You can see Mark Wilfalk, Mark Wilfalk and Frank Woodard they're our co-chairs for this event. As Cedric makes his way to the stage to sing the first stanza of the Black National Anthem, I just want to remind everybody to please visit Ballroom D to visit the vendors that are there that are set up and they're waiting for you. And we also have some refreshments for you. But I just want to say thank you for always being there for, uh, for, for us, the City of Tampa Black History Committee, because we've come a long way. And we thank Bobby Bowden for having that vision and giving us the strength and encouragement to keep going so that we can continue to give to our city employees, you know, recognize them for the hard work that they do in and outside of their offices. And again, Mayor, we will definitely miss you. And But we'll see him, because we used to always see him coming through the door, and he's sitting in the back, but he, he's always supported us, even before he had the seat of mayor. So Cedric, if you come up and we go in closing, if everyone can stand, please. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven rings Ring with the harmonies of liberty Let 
our rejoicings rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as a rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark path has brought us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on to victory as one. Thank you.